Hey everyone, welcome back to Virtualization How To with Brandon Lee. Now I think the comparison in this video will strike a chord with most who are looking at virtualization options in 2024. We're diving into a comprehensive comparison of Proxmox and ESXi in 2024. Whether you're running a home lab or you're managing a production environment, we will cover the main points to help you make an informed decision on which virtualization technology is right for you in 2024. Well, to begin, let's get a quick overview of both platforms. First off is Proxmox. Proxmox is an open source hypervisor that many of you are familiar with running it in your home labs that's built on top of Debian Linux. It's free to use and it doesn't require a support subscription for updates, although you will get nagged to death with the platform about support subscriptions. It's easy enough to suppress those and move past the subscription nags. Proxmox VE runs on top of kernel virtual machine or KVM to run virtual machines, and it also uses LXC to run LXC containers. With the release of Proxmox VE 8.x, Proxmox introduced new features such as software-defined networking and also, as of recently, a new virtual machine import wizard for VMware ESXi VMs is hot off the press. And that is a new development and something that many who are looking to migrate from VMware vSphere will certainly appreciate. Next is VMware ESXi. ESXi has been a leading virtualization platform for decades now. I remember getting my hands on uh, GSX at the time and then ESX without the I uh, around 2004-ish. ESXi is known for its stability, its industry-leading features, and community support. It has a large following with organizations like VMUG, as well as the vExpert reward program that rewards technologists for their content creation activities, as well as community engagement. VMware ESXi 8.x brings features like vSAN Max, Cloud Connected vSphere Plus, and enhanced security and performance tools. Now let's take a look at the pros and cons of each. First of all, the Proxmox pros. Proxmox is completely free to use. It supports a wide range of network adapters. It includes built-in software-defined networking. It has very simple clustering that doesn't require a special appliance like a vCenter server to enable. And you can also use software-defined storage using the open source solution known as Ceph. And what about the Proxmox cons? Proxmox has a user interface and networking that can be less intuitive than ESXi. Thin provisioning setup can be more complicated and have a few more strings attached. And it has limited commercial backup solutions compared to ESXi, although this point is rapidly changing. I'll get into that more as we cover that section. As far as the ESXi pros, many are familiar with these, but VMware ESXi is highly intuitive. It's got a mature user interface, advanced networking capabilities with the V network, distributed switch, along with the standard switch that you get with normal licensing, it has a strong ecosystem of backup solutions, commercial support, and it seems like everyone has integrations with VMware vSphere. They've got easy deployment appliances from most vendors for that particular platform. And it has superior storage options with vSAN and traditional storage technologies, arguably so, uh, compared to Proxmox. Now, what about the cons of VMware ESXi? One of the major cons at this point is the free version of ESXi is no longer available. It has a more expensive licensing and additional costs for features like vCenter Server as well as NSX Data Center for software-defined networking that's free in Proxmox. And it has limited support for certain network adapters, aka the Realtek network adapters, that you cannot install VMware ESXi when a machine has only a Realtek adapter. As we compare the installation of both Proxmox and ESXi, both Proxmox and ESXi have straightforward ISO installations. Proxmox is certainly more accommodating than VMware ESXi when it comes to network adapters and the drivers that are included out of the box. ESXi requires specific network adapters such as the Intel chipsets 
and not the Realtek adapters. And so this often requires workarounds such as USB network adapters or just simply using hardware that already has the Intel interfaces installed. Now let's briefly consider the interface of both. Proxmox uses a web GUI that's accessible via port 8006. ESXi's host client is accessible via the host IP address without a special port. VMware is also moving towards an Electron app for the web interface, potentially affecting the user experience. And that is something that we are waiting to see exactly what that will entail on the VMware side of things. So it looks like at least VMware is moving towards a more full client installation to access the environment. The next section is networking and storage. Proxmox uses the very familiar Linux networking concepts, such as Linux bridges, which can be uh, a bit less user-friendly than ESXi's networking. Uh, ESXi's networking is more intuitive with the port groups constructs and the vSwitch concepts. Proxmox also, though, offers built-in SDN, while VMware requires the additional NSX data center license. Now, when it comes to storage, VMware ESXi offers mature storage solutions, including VMware vSAN, which is their software-defined distributed storage solution. And VMware, of course, also fully supports traditional storage using iSCSI or NFS. Proxmox supports NFS, iSCSI, and Ceph for their software-defined storage solution. VMware storage is highly intuitive, but it comes with much, much higher costs when you consider that the hypervisor with Proxmox is free, and then you can use storage solutions like Ceph also for free. Now, what about clustering? When it comes to clustering, Proxmox clustering is built in. It's easy to configure. And as mentioned earlier, you don't have to have a special appliance to enable those features like you do with VMware ESXi, whereas VMware ESXi clustering requires vCenter server. This arguably also adds complexity as well as the vCenter server license cost. Costs. But what about migration? Proxmox now has a new import wizard that simplifies importing ESXi's virtual machines. VMware provides advanced migration tools, including their vMotion capabilities, as well as HCX, which is extremely slick that allows you to literally move workloads from on-premises environments up to VMware cloud configurations and their cloud solutions in AWS, Azure, and other cloud providers. Do check out the Proxmox Migration Wizard video that I created not too long ago covering this new functionality. Now, what about backup solutions? Proxmox has a native backup solution. It's called Proxmox Backup Server, or you'll see the acronym PBS. Proxmox Backup Server offers free enterprise-grade backups, and that's certainly not something that you're going to get on the VMware side of things for free. However, Proxmox has had limited support from commercial backup vendors currently. However, this landscape is changing as many of the major players are taking notice that Proxmox is on everyone's radar. Uh, solutions like Nikivo backup and replication have already added official Proxmox support in their backup solution. And another, arguably the major player in this space, Veeam, recently announced forthcoming support for Proxmox backup. So that's really exciting on the backup front that some of these enterprise vendors are taking notice of Proxmox and many of these enterprise organizations feel more comfortable with these commercial backup solutions that are separate from the entity that creates the hypervisor and that has technology that they have learned, they've relied on for years and they're comfortable with. I know we've covered a lot of information comparing Proxmox, which is open source, versus VMware ESXi that we've known and loved for years now. Finally, let's take a look at a comparison table of the two technologies. First of all, as we've considered with the platform type, Proxmox is an open source solution versus VMware ESXi that is very much proprietary. Now, looking at the license cost, Proxmox is free with subscription support services that are available for the platform versus VMware ESXi that is completely paid at this point. There is no VMware 
free ESXi hypervisor any longer. However, I do want to mention when it comes to free VMware solutions, VMware recently released VMware Workstation Pro as well as Fusion Pro as free offerings now. So no longer will you have to acquire a license if you're using the solution for personal use. And I think this is a great platform for those that may not want to dive headfirst into dedicated server hardware in their home lab, and they simply just want a dual purpose machine like a mini PC that they've thrown some extra RAM into or another workstation that they're running at home, I think this is going to be a great offering for many who simply do not want to invest in a full-blown home lab, but they want to experiment, they want to play around, they want to uh, learn new technologies and solutions. Now, as we talked about with the core functionality, Proxmox runs KVM and LXC, whereas VMware ESXi runs virtual machines only. So if you're running containers, you're going to have to run a Docker container host or VMware does have native functionality with VMware Tanzu with Kubernetes, and you can run that natively inside of VMware ESXi. The user interface for both has a nice web-based GUI. VMware is dependent on vCenter for the full functionality with the vCenter client, and they're moving to an Electron app in the near future. Storage options both support traditional storage as well as software-defined storage, although again, that is free on the Proxmox side of things. Well, let's wrap this up with our final thoughts. Both Proxmox and ESXi are powerful virtualization platforms. VMware ESXi offers more features and a polished interface, but at a much higher cost, much, much higher since the Broadcom acquisition. Proxmox is a cost-effective solution with growing capabilities, and it is gaining tremendous traction, not only in the home lab community, but also in enterprise environments. It's ideal for those that are on a budget or they prefer open source software. Well, thank you guys for watching. If you found this comparison helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more virtualization content. I hope you guys stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will catch you guys on the next video.